Thank you for inviting me. It's a great honor for me to be here and to give this course. So uh, the title of the course is uh, is about. Uh, I mean, this course is about uh, algebraic representation. Algorithmic actions, something that we call area. And it is uh, based on a joint work with Alex Fuhrman. <clears throat> and uh, today I will speak about uh, ergodic theory on algebraic varieties. Uh, so uh, in an, uh, an, our undergraduate curriculum, we study about uh, measure theory and we study about topological spaces. Later on, we combine the two and we try to uh, understand the theory of uh, measures on topological spaces. Also, uh, we learn sometimes about algebraic geometry and algebraic varieties. Um, but many times, our algebraic uh, structures, algebraic varieties, uh, do live uh, over topological fields. And in these cases, uh, they carry topological structure other than the Zariski topology as well. And one can uh, start doing measure theory over such varieties. And uh, we will take this point of view here. Uh, so let me set up. During this talk, K will always be uh, a local field. And I will assume, usually, that the characteristic is 0. Uh, just to faci facilitate uh, uh, my world, uh, most of what I say actually will hold also in positive characteristic. but. Uh, it will be easier to state and to argue, uh, assuming the characteristic is zero, so I will not mind about it. Also, I want to say that uh, most of what I'll say uh, holds also in, the, in, in a more general uh, setting, where K is not necessarily a local field, but a field with an absolute value, which is complete under this absolute value. Uh, but... Uh, Again, I will not care about it much now. <coughs> I will have G, a K algebraic group. And I will denote by G the K point. Uh, I promise to uh, confuse the two and many times regard uh, capital G uh, as bold face uh, G and don't mind too much about uh, the difference in structures. But of course, at some time, at some points, it is important to uh, have this, uh, uh, distinguish the two. <coughs> and I will have uh, G act on V, uh, a K algebraic action on a K a k variety. And associated with this, of course, we have the action of capital G on capital V, which is the k point of a uh, ball face V. Uh, and I want to emphasize that this is uh, 
an action of a second countable. locally compact. A group on a second countable locally compact space. And of course here I'm taking a G and V uh, with the topology associated with uh, the K structure. Thinking of K as a topological space, so K as its analytic topology, K to the N as, as its analytic topology, a fine subspace. Zeros of polynomials in K to the N have uh, their subspace topology and general K varieties, or rather K points of K varieties have uh, the structure, I mean, uh, the associated topological structure. Also, they have the associated uh, k-analytic uh, structure, which is some, somewhat related. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, let me give let me give an example, or maybe a set of examples. Consider SL2R. acting on R2. So uh, obviously uh, this action has two orbits. Uh, the origin uh, and the rest. Now this is a closed orbit and this is open. Uh, so the orbit structure is uh, very easy to understand. Now, uh, let me uh, also uh, study dynamics, not of SL2R itself, but uh, of various subgroups in it. Uh, let's consider the groups K, P, A, U inside SL2R. Uh, and I suppose most of us understand just by uh, the notation what I mean by these symbols, but nevertheless, uh, K now is SO2, P is this group, A is the diagonal group, and you, well, I guess isomorphic to our star. U is the unipotent group, isomorphic to R. So I'll draw here the space of orbits associated with each uh, such action. Let me take some colors. K orbits on R2 are just uh, circles of various sizes. Uh, P orbits now here we have three ones. Uh, we have the origin and we have the rest of the x-axis and everything else. Uh, for A, we have, again, the origin. Now we have the x-axis and the y-axis, as well as various hyperbolas 
like these ones. And also u orbits here actually every point on the x axis is fixed and the other orbits are just horizontal lines where the u action is given by uh, shifting. <coughs> Now you see that here, I mean, this is typical for unipotent actions, every orbit is closed. Uh, the orbit space is not Hausdorff uh, because we cannot separate these points uh, when putting the quotient topology on the orbit space. But uh, still, uh, every orbit is closed, so every point in the orbit space is closed. Uh, here, this is not the case anymore. Not every orbit is closed. Um, those hyperbolas are closed. The, the origin is closed. But the x-axis, for example, is not closed. Uh, it's almost closed. I mean, the, its closure also contains the, uh, the origin. And similarly, in the other examples, uh, so now I want to make the, I, mean, I want to state the general fact the g orbits on V are locally closed. Well, locally closed means the intersection of an open and a closed set. Or equivalently, uh, a locally closed is an adjective describing a subset of a topological space. This subset might be, I mean, one way to define this is that this sub subset is an intersection of an open set and a closed set. Equivalently, this subset is open in its closure. So uh, this fact regards either the Zariski topology or the K topology of the G action on V. <coughs> Now, okay, let me go here. Now, since every uh, G orbit is locally closed, uh, I get. points in different orbits could be separated by a G invariant open set. So for example, this point here could be separated from this point here because, well, this point is containing the complement of that point. This point here could be separated by this point here because I can take the complement of that line. 
which is gene variant open set that contains that one, but not that one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> so equivalently, let me restate this. If I take V more G as a topological space, again, with I'm talking about V with the analytic topology, with the K topology. And I'm looking now on the space of G orbits. I mean, if you're an algebraic geometer, you might be a bit worried about just looking at the space of orbits. This is a, a complicated, uh, sometimes ugly space uh, from an uh, algebraic geometric point of view. But for us, this is just, I'm, I'm just now thinking about the K points in V and the K points in G. And I'm truly am looking at the space of orbits. And I'm putting on it the quotient topology. So the topology that make the map from V to V mod G open. And, uh, and this topological space uh, is T0. So topology separates points. This is what uh, we, we see here. Uh, and second countable. Because V is second countable. Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, maybe not an ideal situation. It's not Hausdorff, but it's, it's a nice one. Uh, and from Borel theoretic point of view, it is ideal. So let me uh, write the following. If you take now the Borel sigma algebra associated with this topology, then it is countably generating. Countably separating, excuse me. I need to explain what that means, but I, I will do it uh, momentarily. But I'm just drawing a conclusion of this, which I will explain again. Uh, there exist. Uh, a Borel map from V mod G to zero one. Okay, so I need to explain a few things here. Uh, so let me uh, discuss Borel spaces for a minute. So a Borel space for me. Uh, a set is a set with a sigma algebra. <coughs> and now I want to state a theorem that uh, should be called the fundamental, fundamental theorem of descriptive set theory and goes as follows all uncountable polish spaces are isomorphic as Borel spaces. Uh, let me recall uh, that a topological space is Polish, 
So this is an adjective describing topological spaces. If uh, it is separable, now meaning that there exists a countable dense subset and it is completely metrizable. So it would meet a metric which gives uh, the given topology uh, under which the space is complete. So again, this is not a metric property. It's a, it's a topological property. It's the existence of this metric that we care about. Such spaces are called Polish spaces. Whenever I have a Polish space, I can take the Borel sigma algebra associated with the topology and care about it as Borel space. And this theorem that I, st uh, I quoted says that those spaces that I obtained by this I mean, if my space was uncountable, uh, are all the same. And th this is really, th this is truly remarkable. I mean, the interval 0, 1, the counter set, separable Hilbert space, separable Banach space, a manifold, they are all the same from Borel point of view. They are isomorphic. This isomorphism is by no means natural or unique. There are many isomorphisms, uh, but uh, they do exist. <coughs> So, just to give you an example, uh, some examples, or maybe four. <laughs> Let me uh, now say what a standard Borel space. This is the underlying. Borel space of a Polish space. A Polish topological space. So now I can give you a list of examples, in, in fact, an exclusive. Uh, list of examples up to isomorphisms. I have finite spaces, countable spaces, all finite spaces of the same cardinality with the SBS structure, uh, that is the discrete structure, they are all isomorphic, all countable spaces are all uh, isomorphic uh, and and maybe 0, 1. Or if you wish, the counter set or a separable set. or whatever example you have in mind. They're all the same. <coughs> so, uh, I care about Borel spaces. I, I have this discussion, well, I will go back to it. But again, we discuss Borel spaces, and these are the best kind. The interval 0, 1 is a typical standard Borel space. But I mentioned the notion of countably separa countable separation. So a countable, countably separated void space is one admitting 
the Borel space admitting a countable collection of Borel subsets uh, who separate the points. Equivalently, if I'm having a, such a countable collection, um, every Borel subset of a Borel space gives, gives me a map to 0, 1, the characteristic map. If I have a countable collection of Borel sets, I'm giving, I'm, I, I am given a map to 0, 1 to the power of this collection. And if this collection separates the point, the map will be injective. And the map will be Borel. So this property is actually equivalent to the following. There exists an injective that separation. Borel map to 0, 1 to the n. Because, again, of course, if there exists an injective Borel map into 0, 1 to the n, then definitely the Borel sets separate the points. They separate the points already here. Uh, and the other implication is the one I already explained. Uh, so we have the following. Uh, but also, by this isomorphism, I get the following equivalent definition. So a space is countably separated if and only if it admits an injective Borel map into the interval 0, 1. So I did explain what countably separating is. And obviously, you see that this implication holds because uh, a countable basis for the, the T0 topology of Vimo G definitely give, give us a, a countably separating a collection on Vimo G. And then we do have that one, uh, as I argue here. Uh, so this is nice. So this is pretty much what I want to say about the Borel structure of V and V mod G. Uh, and as you see, it is quite uh, simple. Now, what comes next is uh, uh, is, the no is, is studying measures on, on V. So uh, let me give the following definition. Two measures on a Borel set, on Borel space, uh, are equivalent if they have the same ideal of null sets. Whenever I have a measure on a Borel space, uh, I gave a notion of what is a null set. And uh, different measure might give me different uh, notion of null sets. And if they give the same, the, I would say that they are equivalent. And a measure class that is a class of equivalent measures, 
then could be just be given by uh, specifying the uh, corresponding uh, ideal of null, null sets. of such a sigma ideal. Uh, I want to make the remark uh, not every sigma ideal uh, is associated with the middle class. For example, uh, if you consider uh, the sigma ideal of meager sets, meager in the sense of a Borel category, uh, of Baer category, excuse me, uh, then uh, <coughs> this is a sigma ideal, uh, but it is not associated with any major class. So by such, I mean sigma ideals that are, do corresp correspond to, to measure classes. Uh, now, so let me give uh, some examples of uh, measure classes on spaces. First of all, our guy V uh, is a k-analytic manifold. I, I, I don't intend to use much of its k-analytic structure, so I, I just mentioning mentioning it. Uh, it is a k-analytic manifold, and as such, it has a canonical major class. Canonical uh, measure class, the volume. <coughs> For any LCSE uh, group S. we have the Haar measure. Well, maybe I'll take the left Haar measure. On S. So um, I have the, the right Haar measure on S. I have the left Haar measure on S. As measures, they, they are equivalent. Uh, typically, they are infinite measure. Uh, but they can only give measure classes. Uh, it is equivalent as a measure, as a measure class, to the right how measure. Uh, so again, it gives a canonical measure class, and I'll just give a warning. Um, this is an invariant measure class. gives a finite invariant measure for the left action uh, if and only if S 
is compact. S is a compact group, uh, which, by the way, gives a very nice criterion for compactness that will be used later. <coughs> so uh, this is one example. But now I want to stress that if T is a closed subgroup, then I can consider the S action on S mod T on the coset space. And S mod T has a unique invariant measure class as well. Uh, but typically, not finite invariant measure. Measure here as opposed to measure class. So well. but okay. Uh, maybe I'll give a co concrete example. take SLN K and let it act on the associated projective space. On this one, the volume form uh, is the same as the how. Class, I mean the volume form as a measure class is the same as the Har measure class, uh, and it is uh, G invariant. G invariant measure class, but again there is no uh, finite. Invariant measure on this space. More generally, if G is semi simple, semi simple, and Q is K parabolic, uh, the same goes, same holds uh, for the action of G on G mod Q. The Hall class, which is also the volume uh, class regarding this guy. As a, as a k-analytic manifold uh, is g-invariant, but there will be no uh, actual finite invariant measure. Now, maybe continue this. Uh, I said that uh, S has uh, left R measure, which is always invariant. Now, but it is Typically, uh, infinite uh, measure. Infinite measure, I mean, that the measure of the all space is infinite. Uh, it is finite if and, all, if and only if S is compact. So 
So it's nice. It also gives me some sort of compactness criterion, which is definitely not obvious. Uh, so if t, also if s mod t, uh, if t is normal in s, and s mod t as invariant finite measure, then uh, if and only if uh, t is co-compact in S. That's for a normal subgroup. Uh, normal closed. Thank you. OK. Now, uh, another set of definition. I'm about to define ergodicity. I know that um, I'm, I'm being very basic in this uh, first talk, but uh, I think I, I need to set the, thing, the, uh, the things right. So uh, now I'm about uh, to briefly uh, recall the notion of ergodicity. I, I hope this is not too much. Uh, uh, I'm not insulting anybody. Uh, let me discuss this in, in the setting uh, of the G action on V, though uh, it is uh, more general. Uh, a G invariant measure class on V is called a Godic if every invariant set, subset, oh, well, subset is null or conal or full. These are, uh, again, having measure class, I have the ideal of, uh, of null uh, uh, sets, and so these notions are meaningful. Um, And of course, uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming that everyone saw this uh, definition before, uh, but let me just remind, this is of course the same. Every almost everywhere defined uh, Borel G map uh, to zero one. Instead of looking at subsets, uh, I can look at uh, maps, characteristic maps. Uh, is almost everywhere constant. Oh, it's essentially constant. Um, but now I claim this is slightly less trivial that Uh, this is the same as having uh, every uh, Borel G map into the interval 0, 1 to be essentially constant. Why so? Uh, let me uh, briefly explain this. I mean, this is easy, but nevertheless. Uh, take uh, your measure class and push it down to 0, 1 by the map. I have a map from V to 0, 1, to the interval 0, 1, assuming I have such. Uh, actually, if you don't want to work with measure classes, just pick a measure in it, a probability measure, and push it down. What do I mean by push down? Whenever I have a, a map from x to y and I have a measure on x, I can push it down to y because how do I measure things on y? By the pushed measure, I pull sets of functions back to x and measure them there. Okay, so I have the notion of uh, pushing measures. and. Uh, so I'm having a measure on V, I'm pushing it to 0, 1. If it was essentially constant, fine. If it was not, then it, is, uh, it has an, a support which is not just one point. So I can, point, I, I can take a point separating the support and look at the pre-image of things below the point and pre-image of things above the points, and these are two invariant subsets. Uh, G, this is supposed to be G invariant map. It's 
clear to everyone that, that so you didn't uh, stop me but uh, how is this uh, contabili contability uh, separability concern important for this last um, I will about to uh, connect the dots here uh, in, in a minute um, um, now where am I uh, and exactly uh, uh, this is my last uh, equivalence uh, Now I can replace zero one by uh, any countably separated uh, space. So uh, a space, uh, an action, the action of G on V is ergodic if and only if every almost ever defi defined Borel G invariant map to any countably separated space. Uh, is almost ever is essentially a constant, and this is clear because whenever I have a, a countably separated space, I can map it into zero one. So it is clear from that criterion over here, which was clear from this one, right? Uh, and this is nice because my spaces, are, uh, spaces of orbits, are countably uh, separated. Uh, okay, so now uh, I'm getting the following corollary. Every geogodic measure class uh, on V is supported. on a single orbit. Um, moreover, and maybe this is not direct corollary of what I said before, but um, uh, take my word for this, and, um, and coincides with the Haar class on this orbit. Maybe I'll put this in parentheses because this is not directly, uh, lo logically speaking, a corollary. But uh, let me uh, explain how I think about it diagrammatically. And, uh, and this is a point of view that uh, will become useful uh, later on. So I'm having V, and G act on it, and I'm having a, a measure class on V. Somehow, let me think about this measure class as a, as a separated action, separated from V. So think about, uh, instead of a measure class on V, think about a G ergodic space, not necessarily an algebraic variety or a manifold, uh, and think about a G map. A Borel G map from X to V. So uh, having a, a, an ergodic measure class here, I uh, can push it over here. And this is how I want to think about my given uh, G invariant uh, or G ergodic measure class on V. And the claim is that uh, if I go farther to the space of orbits, this map become constant because, uh, because this is a countably separated space. So there must be an orbit, G mod H, in here, uh, such that all my measure is pushed to this orbit. And uh, the thing in parentheses is basically saying that moreover, since uh, the G action here on V uh, as locally closed orbit, the orbit, uh, the topology on orbits basically is the same as the natural topology or the unique uh, G invariant topology, sorry, not the unique, the, the natural locally compact topology on G mod H. This is uh, homeomorphism. And in particular, Borel 
isomorphism. Okay, Be because uh, because the, the action of G on V is so nice as locally closed orbits. So again, um, so for the excuse me, so for the map from X to V, you need some continuity. Uh, this is a, this is just a Borel space. Oh, I mean, that's a, that's a diagrammatic point of view that I will discuss later on more formally, okay? But now I just want to have it uh, on the board just to think uh, in these terms. But this is a Borel space. Uh, it has no a topological, no a priori topological structure, but it has it, it carries an ergodic it carries an ergodic measure class, and maybe you want to think about it as just V with the ergodic measure class that you have, but in a different category somehow. Um, and uh, because of this, I want to separate somehow the, this picture. And uh, the claim is that the map from X to V pushes an, an ergodic measure class here that must be mapped to one single point in the space of orbits. And this means that uh, the image of X is actually contained in one single orbit. And because dynamics of G on V is so nice, this single orbit, every orbit is just topologically the same as G mod A's. A again, G mod A has a natural uh, topological uh, structure, which uh, is defined uh, by the being a quotient of G, or the coset topology. And um, I claim that this is a Borel isomorphism. Uh, so actually, whenever I have a, an invariant measure class on V, it's, it's, it is the invariant measure class of one single orbit. Uh, if it is a godic. So this is a very important picture to, uh, to have in mind. Are, are there any uh, further questions about it? So uh, let me then, before uh, taking a break, let, let me now discuss what happens uh, if if the ergodic uh, if my if my measure class is not ergodic. Now, take nu, uh, a, a G invariant measure class on V. Actually, it need not G be G invariant just uh, to start with. Uh, so you, we have V, and we have V mod G. Again, if you're an algebraic geometer, this, you might think of this as a terrible space. This is not a categorical quotient or anything. This is just the space of orbits. But from Borel point of view, it is countably separated, and it is very nice. And I have nu, a measure on V. And I can push it down into a measure on this uh, space, which is nice enough. It is nice enough because it injects into 0, 1, remember? <coughs> so. In my mind, actually, I think of, of this map from V to 0, 1, if you wish. I mean, this space is, is nice. And, and the claim is now, uh, that's the, th the, 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 the general statement of uh, ergodic decomposition, or I guess uh, what I'm about to say is, 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 is called the, the, the theory of disintegration of measures. Whenever I have a, a measure on a nice space, which is mapped into a nice space, and uh, then this measure could be uh, read as an integration of measures on fibers. Uh, let me put another uh, schematic picture here. This is uh, the, the space V, and it's uh, this square. And, uh, and it is mapped into uh, the one-dimensional space here, which is supposed to be the space of orbits. And I have uh, the fibers. And uh, the claim is that, OK, I have nu here, a nu bar here. And this is, these are well defined, but now for a point t in here, I can find, that's what I'm about to say, a, a measure on uh, which is supported on a single fiber, nu t. And th this process, this is a transcendental process. It is not everywhere defined, 
but it is almost ever defined. And, it, and you can carry, a, carry it for any measure. So uh, the symbolic uh, in, uh, way we, we, we write it usually is that we write a nu as an integration over the base space of the measures nu sub t with respect to nu bar, the measure on the base. Um, and for and the claim is that for almost every, uh, with respect to nu bar, uh, point of any t inside Vimoji uh, exists nu sub t such that this uh, formula holds. And, and what, what is the meaning of this formula? It's, it's a recipe how to, uh, to define the measure nu out of this data over here. If I have uh, a set in V, I can uh, integrate uh, its intersection which, with every fiber and get uh, a number. And these numbers give me a well-defined function over here. And I can now integrate uh, this function with respect to the measure nu bar over here. That will be the result of this expression. And the claim is that this expression uh, reconstructs nu for me. OK? Uh, the map, uh, uh, what's the regular, so the Borel, t maps to mu t is, bo is Borel. Uh, yes. Uh, so we, we get a, a map from v mod g called disintegration map to probability. Uh, let's say that nu is probability measure uh, here in this discussion just for preciseness. I mean, you really, I, I, I care uh, for measure class a priori, but I just will pick a representative here. Well, let's say it's probability for uh, to facilitate this uh, writing down this formula. Then uh, I get a map from v mod g to prob v called disintegration. Uh, and this is a Borel map, almost ever defined, with respect to nu bar. So several topology on proba define the same Borel space? Yeah, I mean, the, there is a canonical prob uh, Borel space, Borel structure on prob V, yes. Coming from, given a, having a choice of a Borel structure on V, you have a canonical bo a Borel structure on uh, prob V, which is the, the weak one that comes from a uh, pairing. I mean, in integrating uh, Borel subsets or, or functions. Um, okay, I put this in parentheses, so let me explain. Uh, if nu is a gene variant a class, this is if and only if. Uh, Nu t is gene variant <coughs> class. And this is if and only if is the how on the orbit. The fiber of this map is it? The fibers are just orbits now. I mean, part of what I said here was a, a general nonsense about uh, push-down measures and disintegration. But now here I specify it uh, for this setting of hours of, uh, this, uh, of taking space of orbits, and I'm, I'm getting this uh, easily. So, so what is the moral of this discussion? I mean, after believing this, I, I understand uh, ergodic, ergodic measure classes. Uh, for G action on algebra algebraic varieties, and these are just hard measures on orbits. In fact, I understand by ergodic decomposition all possible G invariant measure classes, and they are just integration of, of that. Uh, so this theory of uh, G invariant classes on uh, varieties is, is dull, is well, well understood. Um, there is uh, another theory, which I will explore after the break, and, and this is what happens if I discuss invariant measure, invariant probability, me probability measures, not just measure classes. This is an interesting theory, but we will see that also this is dull. I mean, we have full solution of everything. Uh, but then, later on, I will 
OK, uh, I will discuss about it later on. Uh, but I will somehow open up the horizons, not just to define G invariant measure classes, but also uh, the ergodic actions, not of G itself, but of subsets, of, of, sorry, subgroups of G. Uh, but this will come later. Let's, let's now take a break. Oh, yes, please. Does it imply that G invariant measure classes upstairs correspond to measure classes downstairs? Yes, it does. Exactly. So uh, this, me this measure class nu is completely determined by this one. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so we come back at 12. Excellent. We come back at 12. That's my next uh, subject. Um, so first of all, I, I want to make the following observation already made. Uh, if n in G is a normal k algebraic subgroup, so in particular, it is closed, but also the risky closed. Uh, and when I say closed, I mean for the usual topology. Otherwise, the risky closed. Uh, if uh, is co-compact, then there exists the Haar measure. on G mod N, which is finite, and also could be normalized to be a probability measure. Uh, now, the nice thing now is that when I look at the collection of all such Ns, uh, I can find uh, a minimal one. So it depends now. Uh, G is not assumed to be a semi simple. Uh, no, but the unipotent radical plus the split theory, K split theory. Yes. Um, you need. Okay, so um, things get more complicated uh, over uh, characteristic P, but I'm ignoring this. Uh, you take the unipotent radical, you mod it out, you take all non-compact semi-simple factors. No, I mean, you have SON, for example. I mean, G itself could be compact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's like yes. Uh, so it's, it's an anisotropic uh, reductive uh, group. Uh, but, uh, but I don't need uh, a fine structure of this. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not, uh, just arguing for existence. And it's, uh, it's convenient for me not, not to know too much. Uh, so I, I can look at the space. I mean, if you want to be formal, I, I will do a bold face uh, normal subgroup here. All the uh, actual k-algebraic subgroups, uh, such that uh, on the level of k points, they are co-compact. Uh, and this is a non-empty. Uh, collection. G is in here. Uh, and I have the Netherian property, so I can uh, find a minimal element over what here. Is what is that word, sorry? Do you mean by Netherianity? I don't know if I spelled it right. Netherianity. <laughs> 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 
O E. Um, maybe it is spelled correctly in my notes, uh, and maybe not. Uh, it's O E. Uh, Jan. Uh, is it a good again enough approximation? Uh, it's it's yeah. It's, this is it is complicated. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at this collection, and it has a minimal object uh, by Nathanianity, and um, this minimal object a priori need not be unique. Uh, in, in fact, I'm arguing now. I will argue in a minute that uh, there is a there is a, a unique minimal object. Or how do you call it? Uh, a least uh, element in this uh, posit. Under, uh, of course, I'm looking it under uh, as a posit under in uh, inclusion. Uh, there exists minimal element. Uh, call it n zero uh, in here, and. Uh, in fact, or claim, n0 is a least element. So it's smaller than everything else in this collection. Uh, why? Because uh, if n, uh, if g mod n compact, I can look at the uh, the product group g mod n times g mod n zero, and I can map g in it by the uh, I mean just take the product homomorphism into these two groups, and uh, the image is closed. The image of a uh, an algebraic group by homomorphism into another algebraic group is always closed, uh, hence compact. So it will be, uh, I mean, the orbit of the identity here will be a, a closed thing, and uh, uh, but the kernel um, uh, will be the intersection of n with n0. So it will be something which is contained in n0 and co-compact. So an element here, which is smaller than n0, by minimality of n0, it must equal n0. And this means that n0 is in n. The kernel is n0 uh, equals n0 by minimality. So this shows that n0 is inside n. So this is a sketch for the proof that uh, uh, n0 is uh, actually a least element uh, in this poset. And um, so this means if I care about classification of uh, gene variant probability measures, I can look at all compact group quotient. And there is uh, some biggest one, g mod n0, uh, which is uh, which by itself uh, carries a, a, a probability measure, the Haar measure, a, a gene variant probability measure. Uh, somehow, what I'm about to argue in the, in the next few minutes is that this is really the reason for any uh, gene variant probability measure on, I mean, this N0 is the cause of any gene variant probability measure on any algebraic variety. That's what I want to sell you now. Uh, so uh, in particular, I want to, uh, before stating the theorem, I, I, sta I, I will state uh, a result. In particular, uh, if uh, we'll see that if G has no uh, compact algebraic factor, Algebraic stands here for K algebraic. Uh, that is, N0 is G. Then every G invariant
is supported on fixed points. So let me put it uh, in a symbolic fashion. I, I, can, I can look at V and I can take uh, the fixed points in V. That's a subset of V itself. And now I can take uh, probability measures which are supported here. This is these are all, of course, G-invariant probability measure. I view them as probability measures on V. So they are here. Uh, so always I have a natural injection like this. Just a minute. And uh, this claim here is saying that uh, this is an isomorphism or equality uh, provided G has no compact factor. Yes, question. Your uh, general working hypothesis is that G is uh, directly connected? Um, yes, it's not a working definition, but it's definitely uh, implied by this. I mean, if G was not, I mean, if G was not connected, not the risky connected, then uh, definitely I will have the group of connected components of G. So th th this, th so I, I don't, uh, which is a compact factor, it's a finite factor. So um, it's not a general working definition uh, of this discussion, but definitely it is implied by this uh, spe specific setting. Um, but this is, this is very, very important. Uh, I forgot and left this uh, uh, on the board, but th maybe this is good uh, because uh, this is, remember, the, the picture of uh, orbit structure of various group actions uh, on R2. And you see here, uh, maybe for SL2 itself, when it acts on R2, uh, we have two orbits, the point, I mean the origin, and I can put delta measures on this, and this will be a G-invariant measure. And, uh, and on the rest, I cannot put a G-invariant measure. I mean, I can put a G-invariant measure, the Lebesgue measure, but it, it will not be finite. And if I, took, if I look at the U actions on R2, uh, on each blue line, I mean, this is just the copy of the reals, and there is a unique invariant measure on it, which is the Lebesgue measure, the Haar measure, and it is not finite. I cannot put any finite measure, but I can put whatever measure I want on the x-axis, which is uh, U invariant. And the same picture goes here. I mean, the, for A, the only thing I can do is having a, a delta measure at a fixed point, and same for P. So you see that the whole picture here is very, very degenerate, uh, but when my group itself, SO2, which is a, another algebraic group, uh, act, then I have many invariant measures. I can take uh, whatever uh, hard measure on sphere and any combination of, of these, like integration, as, as now it is raised, but uh, you remember the ergodic decomposition. I can take whatever measure I want on the space of orbits, which is a ray, and, uh, and I can integrate the hard, me hard measures on, uh, on spheres, on circles, with respect to this measure, measure on the base, and get whatever invariant measure. Uh, in here. And, and this is the full picture of classification of measures. And you see that there is a, a, a difference um, between, uh, I mean, compactness is an issue, compactness of the, of the acting group. So uh, this general formula explains and, and uh, much of what we've seen there. Uh, maybe. Uh, I will give later, uh, in, in, in a few minutes, I will give a, a more general uh, proof of this. But let me now uh, just give a, shall I do this? I'll, I'll just sketch, uh, without writing anything, a proof of this, uh, just based on, the, on this picture and this reasoning that I said that uh, on, uh, on uh, when, I, when I took a, a one-dimensional group, and discussed invariant measures for this, orbits were either one-dimensional, infinite, and do not have uh, finite invariant measures, or single points. I mean, again, if U was a connected, one-dimensional, non-compact group, then every orbit 
is either non-compact, and then you have the Haar measure, which is not finite on it, or a, a singleton. And then uh, it is U-fixed. Now, whenever I have a, a G invariant probability measure on V, then I can uh, take all the one-dimensional connected subgroup, non-compact ones, that generate G, uh, that are in G. And if G is non-compact factor, they will generate G. And the space of, uh, the, the space of invariant measures will be invariant under all of these, and exactly will be the measures that are invariant under every uh, one-dimensional connected uh, non-compact subgroup, again, because they generate. Uh, so I just want to, uh, it is enough for me to consider such guys. And for such guys, I can discuss invariant measures, and I can take ergodic decomposition, and by this picture, the invariant measure must be on the fixed points, by this picture and the, and the, and the previous explanation. And this is a almost a full proof for, for this fact. Um, and again, it's a, you can make out of it a full proof, at least in characteristic zero. Later on, I will... Uh, argue uh, about something which is a bit of a generalization of this, and I will get, give a, another proof. Uh, so this is why I, I allowed myself to be so brief now. Uh, what I want to say now... Ah, now in general... Every uh, G invariant probability measure on V uh, is supported on Oh, sorry. Um, uh, here I discuss the case when I, I don't have any uh, compact factor. In general, I always have a, a canonical maximal compact factor, which is uh, given by N0. And the claim that I will make uh, in a minute is that, uh, uh, is that any uh, G invariant probability measure on V is supported on the, on the N0 fixed points. Uh, but now I realize that I, I forgot to say something. Uh, I will come back to this. Uh, I forgot to give a, a very nice uh, corollary of, uh, of this picture. Uh, so maybe I'll put it here. Uh, it is the Borel density theorem. Uh, if G has no compact factor, and gamma in, in G is a lattice. So this means that gamma is a discrete subgroup such that G mod gamma has a G invariant probability measure, something that I told you that it is, it is quite rare. Uh, now, gamma is not an algebraic group by itself here, of course. Uh, then, gamma is a risky dense in G. Uh, so this... Uh, Borel proved this in a quite intricate uh, proof. Uh, Firstenberg gave a, a very uh, neat uh, proof of this later on, using poor recurrence. And, um, and basically, if you think about it, uh, Firstenberg's pro proof enough, it is nothing but this uh, proving this general uh, statement, though he never uh, made it. Uh, let me explain this. I, will, I can look at... G mod gamma, and I have a map to G mod uh, the group, I guess this is the K points of the Zerisi closure of gamma uh, here. So uh, I have a, a G invariant measure here, probability measure, 
I can push it down. Push the G invariant probability measure. And the push must be uh, contained in a G fixed point here. But this is a transitive space. If I have a, a G fixed point, then uh, all this space is just a point. And this means that uh, uh, the stabilizer is just everything. So this is uh, a very neat uh, explanation of this fact. <coughs> and I'm back to my discussion. Uh, so maybe I'll forgive me for being a, a little sloppy. Let, let, let me restate it as a theorem. So let, read, read it, let us read it again. Given G, now general G, uh, I am allowing uh, co-compact factors, co-compact normal subgroups, co-compact K-algebraic uh, subgroup. And in particular, I have N0, which is the minimal one. And the claim is that whenever I have an action of G on any V, algebraic, K-algebraic action, and I'm looking at a G invariant measure, it is supported on the N0 fixed point, and N0 is normal. So the N0 fixed point is a G invariant subset on which the action of G write it down because it's, it's trivial but important, uh, is G invariant sub, sub variety on which G acts via its compact factor G mod N0. So again this explains what I said that all uh, invariant probability measure dynamics is happening via a compact factor. And uh, no, no really uh, interesting dynamic of groups by themselves, or non-compact ones. Uh, any question about uh, the statement? I'm about to prove it. So did you give a proof of Borel density theorem yes. based on that theorem? Yes. Uh, I, I, I guess I did some logical uh, maneuvers here. This theorem here, in particular, implies that one, because this is the case N0 uh, is G, and then you get this equation. And this Borel density theorem uh, follows from that one. But maybe I, uh, I mean, I confused you because also I sketched by heart uh, uh, another proof for this one. And now I'm, I'm going to give another proof which is different from the one I sketched for this more general proof, well, for more general theorem. Okay, Pierre? Um, okay, so uh, the method of proof is very important for me. It somehow, it starts like uh, this one, this observation, and uh, I will take a minimal object in a collection of subgroups, and this is a very, very useful trick that appears all over uh, in, in this theory. So uh, let's start with uh, given the right collection. So we look at a collection of all age in G, K algebraic subgroup, uh, such that G mod age is a good candidate uh, for, uh, for V. Again, um, I want to discuss all probability measures on all possible uh, varieties. All G-invariant probability measures on all possible varieties. I already know that when I act on a variety, um, really, uh, from the point of view of ergodic theory, I'm only interested in orbits. So instead of looking at all varieties, I will look at on all possible orbits, all possible coset spaces. So I'm looking at all ages, all possible stabilizers of points, all age, K algebraic subgroup, such that on G mod age I can find uh, a non trivial probability measure. Okay? And of course, this collection is not empty because I have G inside it, 
uh, just have the, the one point with the delta measure. That's the fixed points that you see over there. Um, now, uh, so again, by notarianity, and I will not uh, attempt to write it again, uh, this word, uh, I have a minimal element. I'll denote it H0. And then I, I can have this variety, V0. And, and I can find, by definition of H, of H0, I can find some invariant probability measure on this. Uh, I will note Um, that there's a risky support of mu naught is everything. Uh, so uh, whenever I have a, a measure, I can take uh, the support of this measure. So the minimal uh, closed subset which uh, carries uh, the full mass. And um, I can do it also in the Zariski topology if you want, or I can just take the Zariski closure, which is the same. Of the of the standard support, uh, and uh, the group. I mean, the measure must be uh, everywhere supported because the support is G invariant subset by itself, right? I mean, the measure is invariant, so everything which uh, I just constructed canonically from it must be G invariant, uh, and there is no G invariant subset in this transitive space. There is no transitive component. Okay, so uh, now I have, if I was really uh, explaining, I mean, there is a little fast that I should do about group of, uh, I mean. Um, connected component is not the problem. The, the problem might be that uh, I have, uh, uh, Galois cohomology is, it might be a problem. I, I have the action of, uh, take the action of R star on itself by uh, taking, uh, uh, multiplying, a, a, and by multiplying by x squared. I mean, x takes y to x squared y. Or take the, I mean, then uh, we have, uh, or take just the, there is a little issue. Let me not go into it, okay? I'm just, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, okay. Uh, it could be easily solved, that's, that's the answer. And, and I want to, s to, to give ideas here. Um, okay. Now, let me now fix uh, another space. Uh, so this is V0, I've chosen it. And now uh, let me discuss uh, a generic uh, G variety, V, and uh, invariant measure on V. Um, and let me assume uh, without loss of generality that uh, there's a risky support of mu is everything. There's, there's a risky support of mu is a G invariant sub-variety. Let me just focus on that one. So I'm discussing uh, uh, this guy, and now, sorry, I'm, pr I'm proving the theorem, I'm um, now, uh, yes, uh, but, yeah, bear with me, now, I, I'm, so I, I put myself, uh, I gave myself a setting, I, uh, I discussed a certain uh, space I constructed, V0, and I discussed a, a generic other space, V, and I'm about to make a claim, uh, for, every x comma y inside v times v0, uh, the stabilizer in g of y is contained in the stabilizer of x. That's a claim I'm, I'm proving now. I'll do it by negation. So I, I will look at, at V inside V0, and I, I will look at the, the, the set of bad points. So take uh, 
u to be all x, y's such that uh, this does not happen. Uh, by assumption, uh, u is not empty. And you could check that this is, this is a, a, an open condition. I mean, this is a closed condition, not this, is an open condition. And the risky open. Now, since mu zero and mu are uh, uh, fully is risky supported, then if I look at mu times mu zero of u, uh, this is not zero because mu times mu zero uh, measures positively every open set. <coughs> so I can take, I can define a new measure to be uh, mu times mu zero restricted to u and normalized. I just constructed now a probability measure on v times v0, which is supported on u. Now, unfortunately, I uh, erased the picture that was here about uh, ergodic decomposition. But now uh, you remember that there must be a a new sub t, uh, a probability measure, uh, a gene variant. Uh, supported on a single orbit in you. Maybe I didn't say, I didn't emphasize it. U is G invariant. This, this, it need not be transitive. I have a measure nu on it. I can decompose, this measure is, pro is probability G invariant measure. I can decompose it uh, by disintegration into measures on orbits. And for generic orbit, I will have a well-defined uh, G invariant probability measure on a single orbit. And maybe you already see where I'm going. Uh, this, this is about to, uh, to contradict the minimality of H0. So, uh, all right. I'll move here. or maybe supported on a single orbit in U, the orbit of, let me just give it a, po a, a name, uh, x comma, x is a point in V, and V0, remember that this is G mod H0. So let me denote it like this. Now, uh, the, the orbit, what is the stabilizer of this point? Uh, the stabilizer is G modulo the intersection of uh, these two, of stab X intersecting with conjugate of H0. And by changing coordinates, this is the same of G modulo 
uh, let me stub x g inverse intersecting h0. I just now took uh, another point. Uh, I, I conjugated that point. So basically, I'm looking at, at the point which is uh, intersecting. Uh, OK. Uh, but now, this piece over here, this uh, uh, stabilizing group, this is contained in H0. in H0 intersecting something. Uh, so this is an one orbit. I mean, this stabilizing group now is an element in this collection over there. It's a K group that supports an invariant probability measure. But H0 was supposed to be minimal. So <sighs> minimality. of H0 implies that this is actually equal. And this means that uh, H0 is inside stub x. And I think this is what I want to. Say, right? Yeah. And, and, and this implies what I want to say. So, um, <coughs> uh, any question about it? Uh. Okay, maybe maybe I I, I I I guess I didn't say. Minimality says that uh, there must be an equality here, and this means that uh, this group is included in that one. Equivalently, this group is included in that one. And this is exactly the equation I wanted to prove. That uh, for every x, y, and this is uh, my x, y, the stabilizer of x is contained in the stabilizer of y. OK? Sorry for not saying it in the right order, but I think I, I said it all correctly. Now, I didn't yet prove the theorem. I just justify the claim. Any question about it? Um, I'll use that claim to, uh, to explain the theorem, to prove the theorem. So now, uh, I will take, I will specialize for b v being v0. I will take a x to be h0, and y to be gh0. The stabilizer of x, so x is the base point in g mod h0, and y is the, well, g shift of it. Uh, the stabilizer of x is contained, sorry, the stabilizer of y is contained in the stabilizer of x, right? So this shows that H0G is contained in H0. And by this, I'm getting that H0 inside G is normal. OK, so the conjugation of every stabilizer is, is included in, the, in another stabilizer. Uh, OK, so in particular, G mod H0 uh, is a group carrying an invariant measure. And H0 is co-compact. It shows now that uh, 
H0 contains H0, uh, contained N0, because N0, remember, was minimal with respect to this uh, property that it is normal and co-compact. But now the claim also implies that H0 is inside the stabilizer of X for every uh, X in So the claim I proved is that the stabilizer of Y, Y was typically some GH0, the stabilizer of it is a conjugation of H0. The stabilizer of Y is contained in stab X. But now I know that, uh, that H0 is normal. So H0 itself uh, is contained in uh, stab X for every, for every X in every V, uh, provided that, that uh, I mean, mu is fully supported. In general, I need to, uh, uh, to reduce myself to the support. So this is what I got now from the claim. H0 is the stabilizer of X for every uh, point in the risky support of, uh, of mu, for, ev for every for every such guy. <coughs> so if you want, uh, also sub mu is H0 fixed. But now, once more, uh, now we'll take V to be G mod N0. And this is another candidate. And I see now that H0 uh, fixes a point in G mod N0. And get that H0 is inside N0. And combine the two, I'm getting that H0 is N0. And I conclude that all along I was playing, I, I didn't know it uh, until now, but all along H0 was N0. And what I got here is that uh, really, whenever I have a, a G invariant probability measure, mu, every point in the support is invariant under N0. And this is exactly what the theorem said. OK. So, uh, so this is an, a nice theorem. Um, any question about it or the proof? Um, so the proof, you can argue that it was uh, a bit complicated. For example, I gave you for this uh, almost uh, this good approximation of the theorem, I gave you a, briefly a, a very short proof. And I could make out, I, I could made out of it another proof for this one. But I gave you this proof because it generalizes. And, uh, and now I want to, uh, to give you a corollary, not of the theorem, but of the proof, which uh, is important. It's important for the setting I will uh, study. Uh, nice. So now I'm having a generalization. But maybe you have a time that I want, you, you want me to finish. Okay. Generalization. I, I will. So th this generalization is very important for the things I will uh, lecture in, in my next talks. Uh, fix now uh, a group gamma. This need not be an algebraic group, but it has an algebraic representation. And 
and consider the action. So um, just uh, a in a, a representation in an algebra group, exactly. Not, no, just take any, I mean, if gamma was topological group, then I would uh, ask my uh, representation to be continuous. But, uh, so maybe this is locally compact second countable group, and this is continuous homomorphism. Set two. And uh, consider the action uh, of gamma on V. Now V is supposed to be a G space, and I'm considering the action of gamma uh, on V via its uh, representation into a V. Uh, the orbit space now is complicated, might get really ugly, but still uh, I have this nice uh, gamma invariant map. So I can disintegrate things over it. So same reasoning as before implies uh, the following theorem. Oh, sorry, uh, not yet. Implies, uh, sorry, every uh, gamma invariant ergodic measure is supported on a unique G orbit. So I have this uh, picture. Uh, if x, x is a gamma space, I'll repeat the picture, and I have a v here, then this map splits like that somehow. <coughs> and now the theorem, there exists a minimal normal k subgroup n inside g such that uh, the map from gamma to g to g mod n has a pre-compact image That's first fact. I mean, this by itself now, this is easy to prove. Uh, you, you prove it the same, uh, by the same reasoning, basically, that we prove that uh, N0 exists uh, before. Uh, and now, uh, and next, imitating this proof that we gave, you can prove that uh, uh, every uh, gamma invariant measure Uh, on a G algebraic variety is supported on the n fixed point. So again, the, the uh, I mean, okay, here I just call it n. I mean, it's, it's not, uh, it's that n that is given by the, the first part of the theorem. Again, the first part of the theorem is 
I mean, it's the same proof as, as I, the one I gave you before, basically. And, uh, and then you have uh, the, the second, which is uh, a translation of this, and, and the proof is just the same. Uh, I'm not claiming now that uh, G mod N by itself is a compact group. But the closure of gamma in it is. Yes, please. I'm about now to uh, say something about uh, support and the dynamics on the probability measure, and then that will be the end of, uh, of this talk. So, uh, so this is an important uh, theorem, and I, and I want you guys to remember it if you want to attend a further talk of mine, but of course I, I will re recall. But uh, now here is a corollary. Assume G acts on V, and I, I'm, I'm having a measure on V which is not necessarily G invariant then I can consider the stabilizer of this measure. That's a subgroup of G, and I think of it as, an, as my gamma with the inclusion map. So uh, corollary, now consider gamma to be the stabilizer in G of mu, when mu is some probability measure on V and take gamma in G, just inclusion, again, and apply the theorem. And the stabilizer of a measure mu in probably, I claim, is compact modulo. Now it's actually compact because the stabilizer is closed. Uh, modulo, uh, the fixator of, of the Zariski support of mu. Now take mu. It is supported on, on a certain algebraic variety. The minimal one is the Zariski support of mu. The fixator of it is an algebraic subgroup. It's an al algebraic subgroup that certainly contains this n by the defining property of n. So uh, uh, modulo it, uh, the image of gamma must be compact. And if gamma is a stabilizer, then you just get it. And basically, if you add, OK. And it, it must be that your group, your measure is actually some hard measure with respect to some compact group that you obtain uh, mod modding out uh, trash, mod modding out some noise that, you do, that the measure doesn't see. Uh, so this is an important uh, thing. So is there any question about it? Because so you can go from pre-compact to compact because gamma is closed? Because gamma is closed in this, yes, correct. So um, I'm a bit rushing because I want to end up this uh, talk with uh, having these uh, two pieces of information on the board. Uh, so that's the first. And the next fact I will not prove to you, but uh, you can just elaborating on the same kind of tools. Uh, you can prove the following fact by Zimmer. The action of G on prob v as also locally closed orbits. So we say that uh, whenever an algebraic group acts on an algebraic variety, uh, then the action is nice, the space, uh, I mean the space of orbit is nice in a certain sense, and that was locally closeness of the orbit. Also, it goes when I, I'm discussing the actions of a uh, G not on V itself but on the space of probability measures on V. And moreover, uh, when I act on, on an algebraic variety, then stabilizer of points are of course algebraic by themselves. Here this is not the case, but it is almost that case. And that's the, uh, this corollary that I said. Uh, the stabilizer of points is algebraic by compact. So it's a good enough approximation. Over the reals, Remember that 
for real algebraic groups, compact subgroup is always algebraic by itself. So over the reals, uh, all this fuss is not, uh, I will not write it down, but if, if you care more about the reals, you should write it down in your notes. Over the reals, uh, stabilizer of measures are just algebraic. Uh, in general, you have this compact noise, and uh, that will be the end of my uh, first talk. Th thank you for listening. Is there questions? Lo locally blo closed, I guess, for the weak start topology on the... For the weak start topology on probe V, correct. I mean, there is a natural topology here. Uh, which I didn't discuss at the, this point of the day. Sorry? If you use a weak star, weak on back, that's the same conclusion probability? Uh, I mean, th there is a, maybe I should say, uh, prob V, th there, is a, there is a norm. This, this is a, I mean, this is a subset of a norm space of all signed measures, and on this, on this you have the total variation norm, for example. This is a very uh, strong topology, and, uh, but also this is a dual space by Ritz's theorem, for continuous functions on V, at least if V was compact, but this ma could make sense in any case. Uh, and I mean, for locally compact, it's a, it's a dual space, uh, and it has a natural topology as a, as a dual space called the weak star topology. And, and, and with respect to this topology, uh, you have this property. Yes. Thank you for. Uh, maybe I'm missing precisely the point, but do, do you not need gamma to be large in some sense in, in, in G with the image of gamma? No, here, uh, here I didn't assume, uh, I mean in this discussion on the board here, I didn't assume that the image of gamma is risky dense in any case. It was arbitrary and in fact I use it uh, for groups which are typically not uh, the risky dense. I mean, later on when I will discuss things, I, I will discuss uh, uh, algebraic representation and it will be typical for me to assume that the image is risky then so you see things but for this classification theorem you don't need it